You are now listening to a Rabble Press podcast. Clock out, come home, and drink away To bash and burn the weekly plays Douchey calls and sweaty balls, this is Scotch Sporting Because there's a joke where Jake goes bing pot He wants to say bingo, but then he wants to say jackpot, but came up bing pot Oh what a what an obscure thing to name a podcast after. I know. That's pretty yeah, good. That is, that That's a hard stretch. cut. That's a hard cut. It's a it's a I think I've seen every episode of Brooklyn cut. by Nine and I have no fucking clue I, what that is. I totally agree. I think I've, I I missed so I haven't watched anything of the current season and I missed half of last season. They okay. say Bing Pot a lot. Really? Yeah. I mean not enough where it's like a Obviously, known catchphrase, but they say it more than once. It's not like like uh, no cool, like cool, 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 or oh yeah. damn, or uh, or pop pop. If we're gonna go See, community, that's a community days. thing, yeah, yeah, pop pop. Oh man, I missed that magnitude. show. Magnitude. They just added it to uh, back to Netflix, eh? I saw that. Yeah, I might uh, I might do a rewatch. We have now maxed out in what Netflix has of Good Place. So oh. if you ever felt like putting season four or five into your plex, <laughs> you would be uh, you would good be place. Uh, grateful. Uh, the good place. It's very funny. No, good place is only four seasons. Is it? I thought it was five. No, Dave. It was pl- it was a planned four season. Because huh. I've watched it all. Oh, cool. Well, the ending just... is abrupt. I'll tell you this right now. The ending is it abrupt. Ju- it just ended. Yeah. Hmm. The series finale was like a couple months ago. Yeah, January. Interesting. Oh, cool. I thought there were five seasons. See, I like that because I feel like Bro- Brooklyn Nine Nine is still pretty funny. Yeah. But it's clearly getting to that point where all comedies do after like five years see community, where it's like, okay, we're out of ideas. And it's when they take secondary characters and make them leads. Like Hitchcock and Scully should never have more than like half a scene. Listen, the the hold on, no, 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 the the episode of their like origin story Back in the 70s it's yeah the greatest episode of the whole <laughs> you show like that. you can't lean <laughs> on them as characters the wing slut episode uh so that's good. funny uh okay we ready yeah uh yeah we're while well, we're we're live on on twitch so hi twitch oh, folks no. yeah i know so I hey listen ready. they got they get the the free preview of the bing pod so check out yeah Check out rabblepress.com for the Bing Pod, which is dropping sometime this week, I assume. Hopefully. Hopefully. We have three recordings up, so. You did three and- episodes? Well, we had a, an intro, an episode one, and episode two. Oh, damn. Wow. And, you're going, and you're going episode by episode for the whole series? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 Wasn't cool, cool, cool also? Yes, uh, community. Community? Yes. Yeah, but when when Jake does it, it's like cool, 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 cool. See, now I think that's reference to Hot Rod with the whole Cool Beans. Right, right. Oh, that movie I watched that recently. That movie is so fucking good. Hot Rod. Yes. Ian fucking McShane, dude. Ian McShane, like man. So Tay, let me let me tell you the 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 synopsis of the movie. So, um, since I assume you haven't seen it. I have not. Okay, what? Andy, Andy Samberg plays How a. How are you surprised? He plays it's an, Andy Samberg, right? And he plays an amateur stuntman whose father has cancer or heart no heart heart condition mm-hmm. and needs a heart transplant, but they don't have the money. So his whole goal is to raise money for his sorry his stepfather, right? And yeah. to raise money for his stepfather to get a heart transplant so he can kick his ass because he just wants to fight him and win. But he can't fight him with the heart condition, so he needs to make the money to fight him to kick his ass. That's funny. And is the daddy in McShane? It is, and he's fantastic. That's funny. Him in a comedy role must be amazing. It is really good. I've seen Never Stop, Never Popping. Oh my god, I fucking That's love, I That's love Pop That's a very Popstar. funny movie that did not get its due. I saw that in the theater. Oh. Yeah. Well, because like I mean, me and me and uh, my buddy Jeremy were like huge Lonely Island guys, right? So when it's like, oh, a Lonely Island movie, we're fucking going. So, um, and there were scenes where me and him were the only one in the theater laughing. 
<laughs> it's like there was people there that I don't think they knew what they were in for. But like like right at the beginning they do the the karate guys music video. Yeah. Right? And he and he's like and they're like, now I'm in a cowboy hat. And then and then Sandberg turns around and he's like, now I'm in three cowboy hats. I could not fi- like tears were rolling down my face. I d- and I can't explain why. Has Tay watched the Bash Brothers experience? Oh, please tell me you've watched Bash Brothers. Mm. It's their video album that they put on Netflix. Are you kidding? <laughs> Tay, should I so Tay, should Tay. we cancel the recording? Yes. Silk robes and kimonos. They play um, Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire. And Mark McGuire. From their 80s steroid days. Oh, I, I heard about it. I've never It's it. so good. It's so good. Uh, you know, we are watching this week, though. What's that? Is Super Mario Brothers. Ooh. So in, in these COVID times, uh, a bunch of buddies and I have been doing uh, bad movie nights. Uh, oh, yeah, you guys were on or invited and you I, just didn't come I, or... I, I Chris couldn't... missed the yeah. Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat one, which I'm was sorry, fantastic, by the I'm way. I'm sorry. I was on, he, he, he had a nap in the afternoon. And so there was no way he was getting to bed before like 930. So it was like, no way I could do it. We got real fucked up. Yeah. Because Ray. Especially so Ray, Mortal Kombat. There's tons oh, of kicks. Ray, to the Ray has made an app mm-hmm. for drinking game rules. Right. Oh, boy. So this is how seriously we're taking it. So Ray, way, way back in the day, we used to have very specific drinking game rules, which you love to Star Trek. Mm -hmm. And we watched Jersey Shore and the old Spider-Man cartoons. And so Ray, this was like 15 years ago, built a coffee table with a monitor in it so we could have our drinks on the table and still be scrolling through what the rules were if anyone forgot. Oh, very good. So we're taking this very seriously. Right. However... We did not need any rules beyond these three. Okay. The one was, and this is an overall drink. Right. When you say the name of the movie. Okay. It literally starts with them screaming. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're drinking. <laughs> the second was any video game, specifically video game reference. The amount of times he said finish him or fatality right. or flawless victory. You're like, motherfucker. And the <laughs> one that just fucked everyone up was kick to the face. And the amount of and, and double kick was a rule and there were double kicks to the face. Oh, God. So that's two so drinks. It, it got to the point where there was like a designated drink tracker. And then when the scene was over, it was like, okay, just do a shot. Like, it was too many to... (laughs) Oh, that's incredible. And so I don't remember much of Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. There wasn't as much fighting as there was in Mortal Kombat. I will say, I don't think I'd seen Street Fighter all the way through. I'd seen bits of it. It sucks. Yeah, it's not good. Like I said, Mortal Kombat is a competent movie. Yeah. It's not... No, 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 no. It's halfway, not competent halfway in the competent. Sorry, halfway competent. I wouldn't even give it that. All but right. it's watchable. Fun. It's fun right. because it, it truly is the video game. Right. Yeah. They don't they don't really try and give it a story. They're just like, hey everyone, we got you together to fight. The worst part though is is they don't even follow the story of the game. Like it like stuff in the movie totally contradicts this the lore of the game. Mm-hmm. But that's that's just me being a nerd. We did have a drink for cultural appropriation and the fact that the Highlander played who is clearly an Asian character. Yeah. In Raiden. Uh, oh. hold, you know what, Raiden's though? Raiden, no, Raiden no, no, no. is an Asian person. Hold on. Ra- Raiden is a god and Raiden can be whatever. This is so true. had to be white, huh? I, I mean, I didn't cast Classic the movie. Chris. But then <laughs> we Street Fighter tried they tried to give it a, a plot there was no street fighting no yeah, that was asked no. numerous times throughout the movie by the way <laughs> will will there be street fighting uh, no the answer no. is no the answer is no they just i don't know why it was called street fighter because I the game is called no street fighter games. and I, I i was told that the characters were all named after characters in the game mm-hmm and poor Raul Julia. Yep, that's it. That's his one song. Left this earth 
with that as his legacy. Anyways, welcome to Scotch Boarding, guys. This it's sort of related because video games, because we have nothing else, have become our sport. There's nothing else. Esports is esports, people are yeah. betting on now. Yeah. Um, are they really betting on esports? Oh yeah. Holy shit. Um, speaking of, desperate. so there's a new game that's trying to be the new thing. Have you seen this Valorant game, Mark? No. It's basically I mean it's basically someone. Uh, well, Riot, the guys who make League of Legends, mm -hmm. their idea was, hey, wait a minute, everybody likes Counter Strike, and everybody likes Overwatch, so let's take Counter Strike Counter -watch. and put a little dash of overwatch in it and everyone will love it and it looks like the worst fucking game i've ever seen <laughs> and i can't figure it out everyone's fucking watching it on twitch it's like 200 because it's a people new watching thing it it's right a new now. shiny yeah, thing crazy i remember when destiny was the big thing yep me too remember that mark oh those are the good days the good old days me you and dave just fucking yeah. <laughs> shooting the shit out of people well my dave and i are very into pixel junk monsters still well, that's good. Because we've realized we're very close to getting all of the trophies. Ah, that'll and do And I've it. never gotten all of the trophies in a game. You don't have a platinum trophy at all? No. Oh, wow. Thank you, Mark, for pointing that I, out. I also have hey, zero Chris, platinum trophies. But Chris is notorious for not finishing games at all, so that's not Dave a surprise. Has, Dave has won. Dave has all of the trophies from... Uh, Ultimate Chicken Horse, isn't he? Ultimate Chicken Horse. Wow. Yeah. Nice. And I, the owner of the PlayStation... <laughs> have none i also realized do you guys remember long forgotten podcast member adam prestige yes, yes of course he is still alive correct yes he but is still alive as far as i'm Great. aware so i what we were trying to play jackbox when these covid times first came out and i was like oh i have twitch let me stream to twitch yeah and my friends could not find me. And I was like, I don't, I don't get it. Like I, I have Twitch on my computer. It's Tay Cuts. Look me up. What? Yeah. What? what, what? Um, couldn't find me. Like, I don't see it, whatever. And I went in and I'm broadcasting on Twitch under Adam Prestige's name. <laughs> because one time, and Mark, you might remember, he came out, you guys both came over. And you were playing yeah. Last of Us. You and I were going to play Last of Us, which we did, and Twitch stream it because we were both incredibly scared. <laughs> and we thought that was funny. And you, but used, I think, and you used his and Twitch we, account. Because he was I, there. Like, this yeah. wasn't a thing. At the, this was like five or six years ago. Right. Anyway, so if his followers are seeing some weird shit pop up on his Twitch, if he has any at all, uh, it's me. <laughs> on my there you go. So thanks, thanks, Adam Prestige, who is still alive. Uh, okay, well, sportsy sports sports. We are week... A million. I'm in week six. You guys are in week five. Four for me. From quarantine times. Oh, yeah, four for you. Yeah. You guys were working a little bit longer. Uh, still no sports. Um, the, mayor yeah. of, the mayor of Los Angeles came out today. Or, sorry told high ranking officials in his city that there will no there will be no sporting events in the city of Los Angeles until the year 2021. But hey, didn't Miami just okay uh WE as an essential service that way they can Miami, hold the events there? The yep. state of Florida did. Yes, yeah, the state cause, of Florida. Cuz was it Ron DeSantis is a fucking tool job? Ron DeSantis said it is an essential service and then he tr he the, he said that 2 days ago. Then he yesterday had a press conference to try and explain this insane decision. <laughs> and he said people are starved for content. They need entertainment, which is true. It's but all of the true, replies but... that I saw was, does this guy have the internet? Huh. I mean, I, and I mean, here's the thing. So, so I've been like, you know, checking stuff out. And so some bands have been doing these like virtual, like concert kind of thing. Yeah. yeah Bare Naked yeah. Ladies have put out a couple tunes. Um, uh, shit, here in my bedroom. Who's that? Goldfinger? They did here in my bedroom and, um, what the, the one from Tony Hawk, Superman. So they've done, cool. they've done those. Yeah. And, and they're really good. They're really well produced. And, and like, are they really, are they in their like 50s now? Well, yeah, late, they, late 40s, but they're still <laughs> rocking. They're, they're cleaned up nice. They, they look good. I saw them at Edge Fest when I was a teenager. Yeah. 
I, 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 I was probably a great there. idea to go in the mosh pit in sandals. Oh, that's mm. a terrible idea. Mm. Very bad idea. It was the Edge Fest that Silverchair was supposed to headline, but then they bailed. I was definitely at that one. And Cake started, and then someone threw a water bottle, and the lead singer was like, throw one more, and we're leaving. Right. And they did, and he's like, all right, bye. And I was yeah. like, no, I can't. I wanted, I, to I wanted to see Cake. I like Cake. I like Cake. And because we were talking about it before we started recording, Nickelback ended up headlining. Oh, boy. Put on a, put on a decent show. Yeah, they... they... <sighs> They're okay. Guys. Yeah, listen. I'm gonna say if, it. If but that would have been like early. That would have been like first album Nickelback, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that would have been. Oh wait, that was in the 2000s. I I don't think I was at that one because Nickelback wasn't a thing until like 2000 or 2001. Were you at the silver? Was it the silver chair cake one? Because that was the mm. one that I was at. Maybe. And Simple Plan played there, like for at one of the side stages. And obviously, as a fifteen-year-old girl, I was like, "Wow, yeah, I love them." <laughs> <laughs> and I still do. There you they go. They were my daddy-daughter dance at my wedding. Oh, nice. Yeah, because my on. dad also loves Simple Plan. There it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't like. We are starved for content because at week five, six, and four. You know, we're a little bit like, okay, we've all seen Tiger King, although I still refuse. Like, we've we've binged through everything. Yeah. Yes, Chris? Oh, no, 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 no. Nothing. Oh, I thought you had something to share with the class. No, no, no. We're good. We're good. Uh-huh. I haven't watched uh, Tiger King. I, I, I haven't watched it. So I get, I get sports. Uh, NFL, like, I stand by what we said. There's no way they're not starting on time. They will play to empty stadiums. Did you well, watch the Super Bowl this past weekend? They, repl- me? they replayed Super Bowl 42 uh, on Sunday. No, I did not watch it. Yes. They re- they replayed. You got you could have watched Tom Brady lose to oh. little baby Eli. But we did we did watch the uh game 6 Blue Jays 93 World Series. Oh, nice. Okay. Like pretty much start to finish. Nice. Uh, so that was that was cool, but I mean, how many times can you watch that, right? And That's I think the, the backflip game is coming up soon. Nah, I just uh, watched that inning. I I think all you need to do is watch that seventh inning. You really don't need to watch anything else. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and I I heard the NFL today is coming up with solutions, like thinking an empty stadium. I I do stand by that they will start on time. They will 100%. either play to, they will either play to empty stadiums or Trump will force it open for the nfl yeah because that's that's his base his base wants football right yep uh and then baseball is pushing forward with this arizona plan Yep. although at least one star in mike trout has come out and said this is a terrible idea terrible or not he's gonna be playing and can they force them no no. Uh, no, but but uh, it'll be in their best interest to play because they'll probably that, like... they'll probably give them the if you guys don't want to play that's fine but you're not getting paid exactly so uh, and for someone like Mike Trout that probably doesn't matter too much but there's there's guys that that will matter too so yeah I don't know do we feel any differently from last week. About now that another week has gone by without sports as entertainment, um, I would I would like to have some sport. Like it's really depressing to think that the playoffs should be on right now. Mm-hmm. Right, like the Leafs should be playing the Bruins right now. It be the Lightning. <laughs> sure, but we know that by this time in the season, it would have ended up being the Bruins. Yeah, so, we know. Oh, wow. like, <laughs> no, 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 Mark. I am confident that the fates will align. Yeah. For the Bruins to play the Leafs again. So the Bruins would have to go into a giant slump, and the Lightning would have to go on some sort of hot streak to make up that gap. Yeah. Stranger stranger things have happened. Yeah, I got, you know, Facebook memory that it was game three, I believe, today between the Leafs and Bruins. It's... The game the Leafs won, wasn't it? Uh, Does it matter, Mark? No. Did they, did they win the series? No. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was like, I only know the end result. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's it's like I don't really realize it until you're right. It's things like, hey, it's supposed to be playoffs right now. Right. 
it's and supposed that, to be basketball playoffs. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. Playoffs. It's supposed to be the most magical time right now. We got hockey playoffs, basketball playoffs, baseball starting up. Like, we we were we were a month and a half away from from CFL training camps opening, and it was supposed I, to be. I couldn't help but thinking when I we watched the that ninety three World Series game that obviously the next year in baseball was the lockout year so that season they didn't award a world series champion and people point to that year as what killed the expos right because they were in a playoff position people were watching the best them. team in baseball literally and then it, the lockout happened and the expos were never the same again and then yada 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 washington nationals technically wasn't it a player strike yes it was a strike Let's mute Mark's mic if we can for the until. I'm see. just saying it's a technical thing. Lockout Should... implies that the owners lock the players out who want to play, but it was the other way around. The owners were the good guys in this. Well, they, they weren't the, the season. Good. They I weren't mean, the good guys. No, no, but no. they weren't the ones who chose to stop playing, though. Yeah, they were the less bad guys. Yeah. Um. But again, why do they set up the CBA to expire in the middle of the season? Makes no sense. Why? So why can't they just have it a CBA that where where they just play and like don't worry about the strikes and lockouts? Like why? I just <laughs> man, can we not just like agree like hey okay let's do things a little bit better this time? Okay, cool, let's do it and let's play. Yeah, let's wait till after the season's done. Everyone get the shit in order. That. So I can't help but be anxious with a similar situation in the Raptors. Yeah. They had such momentum coming off a championship where we all thought they would not be the same team. And then lo and behold, they're just as incredible good, yeah. this year with obviously definite chance of the playoffs, definite chance of going deep. And no, playoffs was guaranteed. That was never oh, they did lock it, didn't they? Before the COVID times. And then Kerblamo season done suspended is this gonna stop any momentum no because throughout the entire year the raptors have always played hurt yeah and now everybody's healthy or well now you know everybody comes but... back but by the time if basketball comes back they'll be fully healthy right but what if it doesn't come back do you think do you think they'll be the same team yeah okay and they have a system set up with nurse that Again, you can plug and play anyone in that system, and that's why they were able to be so successful this year, despite losing a ton of man games to injuries. What? Okay, so do we think that the NHL and the NBA are going to finish their seasons, or are they going to cancel it? I said I still think they're going to finish their season. You think they're both going to finish? It. Yeah. I last I heard with the NHL, they were looking to push the start of next season. Oh, canceling like... All Star Game, canceling all bye weeks. Okay. Uh, to shorten the schedule within a november time frame so start mm -hmm. in november instead of yeah okay October. and what so when do they with that time frame when do they expect to be back on the ice to finish this season the summer the summer yeah i think it's 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 about giving necessary rest between seasons because oddly i'm looking at very similar situations for the tv show that we are still looking to start our next block of shooting at the time we intended, which would be around September, but kind of the later we have to finish the block that we bailed on, the more we have to push the start because you need that rest. Right. It's not about, you know, the start of, it's about like the time between end of one season, start of another, you need that, you need that at least Break. couple months. Yeah. And so hockey is looking like, I would love if they came back, maybe they're, situation where they come back in june so it's june july august yeah break september october start again in november because right now the the stanley cup's awarded in june yeah mm -hmm. and they're off july august and then they start training again in september. september yeah yeah so it's it's doable yeah so that would mean uh, the regular season would probably start sometime in december no, November the... would be the start of the regular season. You cut preseason? It might be late November. Yeah, they probably cut down the preseason games to get okay. rid of the All-Star game. Yeah. They're cutting out the bye weeks. Okay. My scheduling brain is just salivating at 
I just want to take this on, see if I can make it happen, move the teams around. So, okay, so we both we all think that they're going to finish the seasons for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. And so when does when does MLB when does the MLB Arizona thing start? Probably in June. Ooh, June? You think they're going to wait that long? I think May. I'm saying May. Yeah, cuz to me to me, I think that if they're going to go forward with this crazy Arizona thing, that that they're going to do it, that they're going to do it sooner rather than later, because they're going to. Well, be my like, issue well, is that they don't have enough testing yet, right? The key is to get full for the baseball players to have everyone tested before they start this whole thing. Right. That way, they know who's. But then, so so here's the thing: you have to get them tested. tested. <laughs> you have to get them tested and then keep them like quarantine isolated i know well to not get yeah because it's like okay yeah. they're tested and they're good right now but in the next three weeks before we send them away maybe they go out for uh they go to walmart and that's why i think they'll take like something. the next month to like pre-check everyone make sure they have the like facilities on lockdown and then it, june this resume is, play. this is nuts this is nuts. Hey, what player would agree to that a player who wants to get paid someone who wants to play baseball but hey, like the second you set foot in this facility, you can't see your family now. Yep. No, I'm sure they'll bring their families in like a quarantine hotels and shit like that. That's maybe. what they're talking yeah, about. Maybe. I would agree to that. No, never. No, no. Hey, listen, we're all on lockdown anyways. What's the difference? You're yeah. just going to a different place. Yeah, I guess. Any excuse to get out of the house. Right. Plus, they're getting paid a lot of money. And they are getting paid a lot of cheddar cheese that we're not getting paid. Yeah. That's true. Dave so. and I do have a deal where he is allowed to step out on me if he has a million dollars. So oh. I would, you know, he's downstairs finishing Ozark or else he'd be yelling no takes these backsies. <laughs> uh, okay, I have some questions for all of us. All right, let's hear them. Since... We have no sportings. Um, well, I guess we've done all of this. Uh, we just didn't touch on basketball. So is basketball, are they going to finish? I see basketball canceling. Canceling? Really? No, no. Well, okay. I mean, come back. Adam Silver has always been level-headed. He's never been all about the Benjamins. He's about the safety of the players and the safety of the league. I can, I can see if anybody, I can see the NBA saying... We're canceling the season. We'll see you back in September. Here's the thing with the NBA, though. They have TV money. So if the Angels is going to open without TV money, I mean, they have the Rogers thing, but it's nowhere near the TV money that the NBA is getting. The NBA is opening, even to games where there's no fans allowed. Yeah, I mean, as amazing as watching live sporting is, I think watching on TV will be just as fantastic. Chris, are you okay? Yeah, sorry. My computer made a noise, and I had to figure out what it was. Fucking Facebook, man. You look like someone took your ice cream. No, I was just like, what makes that noise? And then I realized I didn't have Facebook fucking muted. You son of a bitch. What? Um, okay. I've been posing three questions to us to debate. I also have a trivia game. So hopefully we will get through these questions quickly because I was inspired by Mark and our bold and beautiful game, which is <laughs> unfortunately over. So I have a new one. Um, why don't we just do that? Yes. Let's launch into this, friends, and we'll see how many we get through. I do have a bunch. The dog is staring at me. He was sleeping on his bed. He got up and then is now laying down beside his bed. Of course. Sometimes I the bed is too fluffy. And now he's wearing... a nice hard, cold surface sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> uh, oh, there's a marriage joke there like somewhere. When, like when Picard was on the Klingon ship. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I just watched that episode. That's why I remember it. Not because I have that good of memory. I will say, wait, of Picard or TNG? TNG, reunification. I will, I'll send you my drinking game rules. For TNG? Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, the name of the episode is is obviously still, it's it's one yep. of the drinks. Yeah. Remember watch you telling watch. us about the Guinan? Oh God, reunification. Hat. They say it like 12 times in the episode. Uh, no, no, no. The worst is Darmok. Darmok, obviously. Oh, God. <laughs> you get real fucked up. <laughs> okay. If you, want, if you want to be a nerd and still get super drunk, 
Uh, okay, so in honor of what would be just past a year from when we, they would have handed out the NCAA tournament trophy, every year I like to gather information about the history of the teams, the history of the mascots, right. things like that. Right. Like the Boilermakers. There is a question about the Boilermakers, but it's not this. They were named after uh, basically a slur. A nearby town said, like, slaughtered by these boiler makers, like these blue collar, do nothing, whatever. Right. And they adopted that as their team name. Right. And then also there were rumors that the university scouted the strongest people in nearby towns to play on their football team, i.e., the boiler makers. Oh, okay. They were the strongest. So I like giving you guys, and I've told you this before, and you're acting like it's new information, which is so thrilling for this game because I'm concerned Mark's memory yeah. will just allow him to steamroll this competition. He might. <laughs> so I have taken, I went in last year's tournament and took the most interesting team names or mascots, and I have designed trivia questions around them. Ooh, all right. So we'll see how many we can get through. And Let's we'll save whatever we don't do for later. Uh, but we should save time to explain why our picture is what it is and right. why the title of this episode will be what it is. So, <clears throat> question <clears throat> one. All right. The history of the NCAA tournament. I'll start off with maybe an easy one. The Virginia State official mascot is a catamount. So I ask you, friends... What is a catamount? Is it A, an extinct type of large cat, most similar to a cougar, or B, a large projectile weapon used during the Revolutionary War, most similar to a trebuchet? I'm going B. I'm also going B. No. What? Damn it. It's, <laughs> it's a giant it's an, cat. It's, it's an extinct cougar. It's just a giant cat. I thought catamount sounded like the word catapult. Right. And thus a question was born. Catamount. Uh, okay. <clears throat> if you want the history of it, uh, February 6, 1928, the Vermont Cynic asked the University of Vermont undergrads if they would like to have a mascot, and the choices were between a tomcat, a camel, a cow, and a catamount. Because they is. weren't extinct. They actually just went extinct or oh. were just declared extinct wow. because no one had seen them in years and years and years and years. It's a good thing I didn't Google catamount because I was about to. <laughs> <laughs> no Googling? We could have Googled the bulls. Right. Uh, okay. The Murray Street Racers are A, from Murray, Indiana, and represented by a race car driver named Speed in honor of the Indianapolis Speedway. Or... B, are from Murray, Kentucky, and are represented by a racehorse named Dunkey in honor of the Kentucky Derby. It's gotta be are B. A speed, a race car driver for I'm the going, Indianapolis. I'm going race. A. I'm going A. I want to be. I want one or of B. us to get it right. Dunkey in honor of the Kentucky Derby. Uh, the Murray Street Races are from Kentucky. Woo! <laughs> and their their mascot is a horse. Name Donkey. Awful. I don't know why that'll be a next trivia question. <laughs> uh, next question. <clears throat> the Arizona Sun Devils. Yes. Have a mascot named Sparky the Sun Devil. Two years after being declared the new mascot in 1946, Arizona State alumnus Bert Anthony designed the first incarnation of Sparky in 1948, which remained the design until 2013, when it's changed a little bit. It's rumored that Bert based Sparky's features on a notable figure he knew. Was Bert A, a Disney illustrator, and his features were rumored to be modeled after Walt Disney, or B, was Bert a political cartoonist for the New York Times, and his features were modeled after FDR? I'm so, B. I'm gonna go A as again. I'm going A. The answer is Bert Anthony was an illustrator for Walt Disney Corporation, Damn it. and it is rumored the features 
were modeled after Walt Disney. Huh. Interesting. Uh, so if you look it up, it's old photos. They've changed it slightly. So the annoying extra bonus bit of trivia is then they had like a features contest. And people, the dog wants to look out the window, so he's crying. <laughs> and people like submitted specific features that they wanted. It's very strange. And that's how they amalgamate. Like they almost did like a group sketch artist thing to design the new mascot. Uh, okay. <laughs> Maybe I hope this one's easy. Hold on. I got to mark down that Chris got this. Uh, okay. The Virginia Tech Hokies. What the fuck's a Hokie? Is it A, a larger than normal breed of turkey endemic to the eastern United States, or B, a loud noise a former student liked to yell? B. I'm Go going B. B. Mark, you've only gone B so far, just so you know. I know, okay. I know. <clears throat> Senior O.M. Stull explained the word was solely a product of his imagination. <laughs> An attention-getting yell. It's also the first tap of the pokey. He made it up. <laughs> they have a team cheer that's something, something hokey. <laughs> and their mascot is like a turkey-like bird right. because the team used to be called the Gobbler. Not a good name. Not a good name. Not a good name. Uh, okay, so both of you guys got that. So great job. Uh, okay, the St. Louis Billikens. Very similar question. What the fuck is a Billiken? Is it A, a specific designed helium airship similar to a modern blimp designed at the school by former football player Max Pruss? Or B, a monkey-like doll with pointed ears and a mischievous smile that was said to resemble a former coach, John R. Bender? A. B. A. Chris says A, the blimp. Yep. Mark says B, the doll. An early SLU football coach, John R. Bender, is said to have been the inspiration of the nickname Billikins, which was the school's team. Basically, the Billikin was a charm doll that looks like a troll that was popular <laughs> at the time and supposed to look like this coach. A blimp uh, is better Pruss, than this. <laughs> Max Pruss is the name of the captain of the Hindenburg. Uh, well done. <laughs> So Mark got that one. Uh, the Tennessee Volunteers have a mascot <laughs> named Smokey. Is Smokey a coonhound dog, which was originally crossbred with a dog called a Tennessee lead, or a black bear, the only bear native to the state, which has been called State Treasure? Going A. Oh, I'm going B. Smokey is a dog. Shit. <laughs> Fuck you, Mark. The current, the, I don't, and I couldn't find any information if it's the current dog or it's always named this, but it's Smokey X. So I don't know if its name is Smokey X or it's the 10th version of the dog. Or it's the 10th the Smokey. I would imagine it's, it's the 10th. <laughs> actually a live dog, so I can only assume it keeps dying. Right. Um... Oh, I do have a live dog question later. Uh, so we talked about them earlier. The Purdue Boilermakers. The term, and I talked to, to you about the history, so I'm not going to quiz you on that. But the term Boilermaker Special refers to what? A, a working locomotive, which is their official mascot. Or B, an end around sweep utilizing the fullback, which the team often used in the 1930s, or C, a really great sex move. I'm just kidding. It's not. I'm, I'm it's like, there's a C. Like, <laughs> I'm going to give her the old Boilermaker. Give her the Boilermaker, you know what I'm saying? Um, so is the Boilermaker special a train or a play? I'm going B. I'm going A. It's a train. Their mascot's a fucking train. Like, literally a working train. Because they were in engineering school, a special train refers to something that's out of the normal schedule, and they used a train to game, so it was a Boilermaker special. It's a fucking train. Your mascot's a train. Boom. Uh, okay. Back to our what the fuck is this? The Cincinnati Bearcats. 
What the fuck is a bear cat? Is it A, a long and heavy mammal with short stout legs and a thick coat of coarse fur that looks similar to a lemur that is native to Ohio? Or a cheer made up in honor uh, of the efforts of former fullback Leonard Teddy Bear? B. Yeah, it's B. Do the bear cat. Yeah, it's B. It was a great... So, Bearcat is a real animal, but it's native to Southeast Asia. Oh, okay. And they were named... Uh, there was a football player named Leonard Bear, B-A-E-H-R. And one of the cheerleaders yelled during a game, they may be... But we have a Bearcat. There it and is. Then it's, yeah, and it's really dumb. <laughs> uh, okay. The UC Anteaters. This is University of California were named after a character in what popular, at the time, 1960s, comic strip? A, a literal anteater in the comic strip BC, or B, a soldier nicknamed the anteater in Beetle Bailey? B. A. It's BC. What? And the answer to that oh. is why not? No, it's BC. You're wrong, Chris. Oh, sorry. You B, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I wait. Can, oh, wait. I no. can see where that's yeah. confusing. Oh. Uh, the <laughs> reasoning is it was the 60s. <laughs> it's the 60s, of course. Uh, hold on. I missed the locomotive. You said the train? Chris? I said the train, Chris yes. got that one right. I yeah. did get that one right. I okay. got, what, two right so far? Maybe three? No, um, you have four. Oh, good thing you're keeping track. Oh yeah, thanks, Mark. The I'll uh, I should have just counted on you instead of me doing it. Okay, only a couple more. We can get through all of these. I got three more. Uh, North Carolina Tar Heels. What the fuck's a Tar Heel? No, I'm not gonna <laughs> ask that because it's literally people that step in a tar. Okay. Uh, are represented by what mascot? A Artemis, a Civil War soldier, or Ramses the Ram? The Tar Heels. Is it a Civil War soldier or a ram? I think it's a Civil War soldier. I'm going A. Mark? Can I preface this by saying that I'm actually a fan of the Tar Heels And I knew that team. going into this. That's why Mark didn't answer. That's why I wanted Chris to say first. Yeah, exactly. Because it's, it's the ram. Fuck. It's a ram! <laughs> Fuck you, Mark. I had to explain because I didn't understand. Why is your math got a ram? I don't know Why either. It's North Carolina. <laughs> I didn't understand it. Okay, let's do another live animal. The Wolford Terriers are represented by Blitz the dog. Blitz is what breed of dog? Is he a Boston Terrier or a West Highland Terrier? The school is not in Boston. You don't need to look that up. Uh, Boston Terrier or West Highland Terrier? The school is also in North Carolina. B. A. It is A. He's a Boston Terrier. Fuck, I'm so bad at this. His name is Blitz, and he also keeps dying. Okay, here's here's <laughs> the last one. All right. The Utah Utes. The Utes? And I know Did for Joe sure. Did Joe Pesci name them? I know for <laughs> sure we have done this on the podcast. So let's see if you can go in the Wayback Machine. Mark Were they A, named after Joe Pesci? Just kidding. Were they... <laughs> Is a Ute a Native American tribe which was found in the Utah region? Or B, a towering and imposing rock formation known for its long, skinny, and sometimes curved appearance? Well, B. I'm also going B. You are wrong. Fuck. Both wrong. <sighs> Native tribe. Their their logo because Dave was like Ugh, he also I quizzed him on these two he also gets the rock formation can't picture their logo their logo is I think just a U but it's got the feather okay hanging off of the so Mar Mark have you been keeping score so I don't have to go back and count yeah it's um eight four hey okay <laughs> so we'll tune in next week when maybe I'll think of some more questions I hope you enjoyed the game whose name I don't have a name for you. I think I'm just going to call this What the Fuck Is This? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> or what the fuck is that? What's a bear cat? A bear cat. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks, guys. Uh, I did. Did we should talk about our actual philosophical questions that I posed for this podcast? Because otherwise, the title and photo will make no sense. Right. Um, so we'll we'll skip to this one. Who? So uh, with no sports going on, I've been posting to our group. You know, because I, I do think sports unifies us and, and sharing our memories is worth getting through this time without actual live sports on. Like, reminiscing has been incredible, and I can't tell you how... Like, Dave and I sat and watched the entire game start to finish. We paused to walk the dog, but taped it, and then came back and, and watched it. And we're talk- we were looking at the players. Where were we when? I was a child, so I was in bed. But... I, you know, we need this. So my question to you guys is, who is your hated player that you will loathe until the end of time? Mark, I'm going to let you answer for me. Because I think oh, you for know. for you? Yeah, I think you know who my it, most hated player is. I might know too. All right, Mark? I'm going Can with Corey Perry. Oh, I was going to go with Henry Burris. Okay. Uh, both are good. Both are good choices. But Mark, Mark is damn right. Corey Perry <laughs> is a fucking piece of shit, and I don't wish ill on many people in this world. But he is a piece of shit, and I know he was an agitator. But I'll tell you what it was. It was the playoffs. I don't remember what year. It would have been in the mid two thousands, and they were playing. The Sharks were playing the Ducks in the playoffs. And Nabokov falls on a puck, covers it up, whistle blows. Corey Perry had fallen on top of him. As he's getting up, cross check to the back of Nabokov's legs. I'm sorry. There's nothing fucking dirtier in this world than that. A cheap shot to the goalie. A cheap shot to the goalie to the back of his legs. Like those are. That's important. <laughs> you know, like he's a piece of shit. Um, he will I've always be a piece he, of I've shit. I've heard he truly is a piece of shit. And and people I know who know him in real life because he's not he's from not far from here. And so people yeah, I know from uh, a little fun trivia. Yeah. Katie actually when she was at the University of Western, yeah, turned him down on a date. That's right. And good for her because he's a piece of shit. <laughs> um and and from from like people I know who've who've dealt with him and who know him from when he was not an NHL player say yeah he was an asshole, and yeah, it I've shows heard, heard the it shows on the ice it shows everywhere he's a piece of shit and and I I will loathe him till the day I die. Good 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 because he he is an asshole yeah. but like I, I say you're like cross checking an innocent guy and I'm like ooh Marshawn did that right and I just. And and you know, and Marshawn, if he played for a team that that I loathed as much as I loathed the Ducks, <laughs> maybe Marshawn would be my player. But or if he played on the Sharks, that's a good segue, right? Oh, that's Two. a good segue, Mark. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> my player choice is Brad Marchand. Right. <laughs> Let's hear why, Mark, because I have a feeling I know. There- I, I I think there's a long. I mean, of- it's not generally specific to just the team I love. It's just generally how he acts on the ice, the whole licking thing, the whole punching people in the back of the head, trying to get away with shit like that. And he's a good hockey player, which you know bugs me even and more. That's he doesn't the need worst to. part is that he yeah. is actually he can actually play hockey. Yeah, like he, I am. But he chooses I mean- to be an asshole. Right. I am all for harmless shenanigans. Like the licking, I'm like, do it. And that's... Because there's no rule that says you can't. Right. And, but, it, but that's it like is... Sean Avery like doing the waving the stick in front of Marty Berdur. And I, I'm okay with that because there I'm, wasn't a rule. Uh, and I'm totally with Tay on that. I totally agree. Uh, I totally I'm, agree. It's the spirit of the game. It's it's like a disrespect thing. But I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Fatso forgot fan. to shake his hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I fucking so. love, I love it. I'm a huge loophole fan, and I feel like the Costanza, like, was that wrong? Like, show me the rule where it says I can't do it. And they made it for Sean Avery. Yeah. He found I mean, that- there's also no rule in spitting in people's mouths, but people don't go around spitting in people's mouths now, do they? Well, okay. Well, there's societal <laughs> rules, Mark. Let's yeah. not get silly here. 
But yeah, there are a couple of indefensible Marshawn acts. Like, I forget, who did he sucker punch in the back of the head? It was uh, last year, Columbus. I forgot I who it was. Then he's done it he's before. Done, he's done it before. He's done it so many times. There was someone that just, like, crumpled, and it was like, ooh, it's a Todd Bertuzzi situation. Like, it was a total sucker punch. Ooh, maybe it was Sean Thornton, and I'm mixing up my asshole Bruins. So really, like, until if Marshawn gets traded to the Leafs, you're not, you're still going to hate him? Absolutely. Mark's going to get say a Marshawn I, I would. jersey. No, Mark, 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 would, Mark would hate it. He would hate it so I much. I hated it when the Leafs got Brian Marchment. Right. And that guy was a piece of shit hockey player, too. Oh, I liked him on the Sharks. Oh, well, of course. Mark- <laughs> oh, I loved him. Oh, I loved Brian I- Marchment. Oh, man. And because I don't know why we He played with an edge, but he didn't he didn't go he didn't go like he didn't go Marshawn style. He didn't go Corey Perry style. No, no. Like like Ryan Klo was one of those guys that would that would be like real rough and real fucking get in your face. But they he was never in that transition it. period at the NHL where it wasn't Scott Stevens bad where it was legal kind right, of thing, but right. yeah, yeah, like Scott Stevens well, was a goon was... but is celebrated as one of the best hockey players yeah. of all time. But he was a fucking goon. Well, that's... That's why I've always loved like a Cal Club because he's he is the he is the cleanest, dirtiest player. Right. He's not particularly great. No, but the guy hits like a motherfucker every time, which is great. In an era of hockey where we don't have the thug anymore, Clutterbuck is that is still able to be that guy. Yeah, without... while still being pretty good at hockey. He, he knows exactly <laughs> where the line is. And that's where he yeah. stops. And that's like he's, mm-hmm. he's not making the Hall of Fame, but he's he's a good player, and he's still that guy that his like fucking, his oh, fucking mustache will captain. make the Hall I'm of Fame. Gonna level you, but I'm gonna let he does earn the Hall of Fame. So I don't know why I've never brought this up on the podcast before, but we've we've talked about this philosophical like players that you hate. What if they join your team? Right. What do you do? And I realized this whole time, right under. His big stupid toucan Sam of a nose. <laughs> I had that guy. Yeah, he was on my team. He was on my team the whole time. Yeah, and he haunt me until the day that I die. <laughs> and that is piece of shit contract wasted. Dark times of the Blue Jays. Yeah, Vernon Wells. Right. I have always hated him as as a young lady discovering her sexuality i was super into jose cruz jr which is a transition to a later question (laughs) and (laughs) vernon wells really took his job so vernon wells was the up and was the center fielder and jose hurt his back right vernon kind of took over and then really never gave up that job right he wasn't good no and the blue Jays spent so much money on him he had one good year and turned into a massive contract but that was it and, and it was a dark time in in blue jays like we've talked about the era before of the early 2000s mid 2000s when they were just trash yeah and they kept giving really great long contracts to terrible players. Remember Ted Lilly? Yep. And, and I still left- stand by a statement. If you're left-handed and throw baseball, you have a guaranteed job in yeah, baseball. 100%. And, and they, That's and, why I'm going to teach Desmond time- how to pitch. <laughs> he should, yeah. And it was the time where they picked Alex Rios instead of Jason Wirth. Yeah. Like, they were, they were just was- garbage players. Oh. And, and the era of the two Alex Gonzalez, one of which more awful than the last. And Sal Fasano at one point was starting catcher. <laughs> and they still gave a 10 year, I think it was 10 years, $100 million to Vernon fucking well. He represents to me that dark black hole of the Blue Jays. Well, and, and if you notice the picture, it's the dark era jerseys with the dark era logo. Like all of that. Oh. Like the just looking at that logo, the J with the with the stupid oh. modern, like it just fills me with like oh, like I just feel 
Ugh. It's so early to like. It's like they took. So Chris, for those watching, please head over to the Twitch stream. Uh, Zanis Desef, uh, Z A E N I S D E S E F. If you want to see the logo that Chris is wearing, and it's like they took that and were like, let's make it speedier and faster, right. and punchier, right. like. That's exactly what they did. They took the they took the blue jay and they go, right, but faster. <laughs> they, they they had a whiteboard up <laughs> and they just we wrote are not faster. leaving this room until you make this faster. Right. There it was such a time, and this uh, this is leading me to questions for next week. Like it's it was just such a time that us as fans want to forget. And Vernon Wells is the poster child for that terrible time. 100%. So really quickly, and what sucks I, is we had Roy Halliday for all those years, and we wasted and him. Got all, uh, both in their primes. Yep. And we wasted it. Uh, I used to call it uh, the reverse curse that everyone that left the Blue Jays then went on playoff success. Right. Um. So uh, just because I alluded to it, I know we're out of time. Who is your favorite non-superstar pl like player when you were younger that now that you're older, you're like, what? Why? And mine is Jose Cruz Jr. Right. I I loved him. My my email is a cruise control. I have a post. I have signed. Like, I've met him a couple times. I have his t-shirt framed and signed in my basement still because I can't part with it. <laughs> and I'm just like, but, but why? He's he's very good looking, right? But that can't be the only reason. It and can I'm be. like, it, it might 100 be. Hundred percent. Not there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> he should have been so good, right? He was second in rookie of the year voting. Uh, Normar Garcia Para, like he he was supposed. His father's a Hall of Famer. He was supposed to be the next that good. Yeah. And they only got rid of him because he played the same position as Ken Griffey Jr. It's like, well, we can't keep both of you. It's like, okay. And then just nothing ever happened to him. And I'm like, but why? Why, Taylor? Why? There were other good-looking baseball players I could have. Carlos Delgado was a good-looking guy. Roy Halladay was very plain and American-looking. Right. I could have picked any of them. Right. Anyways, who are your gentlemen? Because obviously, maybe, uh, no judgment, you weren't swayed by looks. So let me hear yours. Mark, what do you got? I want to hear yours first. Uh, mine might upset some Leaf fans, but uh, Wendell Clark. Okay. And what, so I guess why? As, as I was younger, I guess I bundled up the media hype because he was the captain of the Leafs. This is at the time of 92, 93, 94 years where the Leafs were on that nice playoff run, and he was a great playoff performer. But then if you look at his stats... He was a pretty average hockey player who couldn't stay healthy at all. Right. And only once had one good year where he averaged more than one point a year. Yeah, he, he was. He was but he is so beloved in Toronto. Right. He's, like like a a, hero. he's a god. Yeah. And he's, he did nothing with the team. Yeah. Didn't win any individual awards. Played average. Hmm. But it was just the way he was playing because he racked up a ton of penalty minutes. He was that uh, gung ho, hardworking, blue collar type of hockey player that you know fans like to identify with because it's relatable, I guess. Right. Like my leader. And as a kid, I was just like, as a kid, I was just, I just bought the hype. I'm like, oh, this is Captain Leafs, sure. Exactly. And as I got older, I'm like, he's not that great of a hockey player. And then when he got his number honored, I'm like, okay, we're seeing uh, him getting all that accolation when. The little players up on the ceiling series have one cups and one awards. This guy was just a fan favorite. Yep. Like Doug Gilmore. All right, you ready for mine? But Doug Gilmore actually scored a lot of points and right. you know, was productive. Right. Okay, Chris, let's let's hear. Okay, so do Henry I go? Versus. Do I go with my? Do I go with my Blue Jays or do I go with my Sharks? Blue Jays. Blue Jays. Um, and I mean, he's not a superstar, but. It does make Kelly Gruber was like my favorite Blue Jay growing up. Yeah, he was never a superstar. Right. And and I can't I, I mean, I know we share the same birthday. <laughs> but that can't be why. I just I don't know what it, it is. It's, it's the hair. It's the hair. It's And he grew up and you were like 
What? <laughs> yeah, and he made that triple play and he made that the didn't triple exist. play that doesn't exist because the fucking <laughs> umpires are assholes. But like, I mean, I remember when he hit for the cycle. You know, like that was a big yeah. deal. Um, he he was never great, but I just I there love Kelly. There I, were many many other players that you could have. Tra- it's the same. Like, why not Robbie Alomar? Right. I, and Why I mean, not the I liked, late great Tony I liked, Fernandez? I liked Robbie Alomar. I liked Tony Fernandez. I liked Devon but White. No, you picked Kelly Gruber. Kelly Gruber was the one I latched on to. I don't. Ugh. John Olerud was on the team. I mean, you know, he had a really good batting average. So. You have a lot of people <laughs> to choose from, and you picked Kelly fucking Gruber. Yep. I mean, it could have been worse. I could have picked Pat Borders. Oh. That <laughs> Sprague. Ed Sprague, so, yeah. The most fun that we had when we watched that game was looking up how old people actually were. Right. Because I just, I don't know if this is like a Benjamin Button situation, but they looked in 93 the, the way they are now. Right. All of those players are in their 50s, 60s now. Right. And they looked like they were in their 50s back then. <laughs> it's weird the way people looked in the 90s. Well, that and, was back then, you know, when fitness wasn't the real uh, yeah. priority. And the players were, more the about players were going to the clubhouse at the end of the game and smoke <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> like, do you think there's any professional athletes now that smoke? Like, do you think if if you went through the entire NHL, how many players do you think smoke cigarettes in the entire NHL right now? I say, Ooh, I say less than 10%. I, I would say it's even less than 1%. Yeah, I would say I there are a few guys. I would say that if there's ten guys in the NHL that smoke cigarettes, I would be surprised. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I was gonna say cigarettes. Thank you for that caveat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. no, smoking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a much higher number. Everybody's doing that now, right? So, uh, okay, gents, this was a lovely episode. Uh, we are very long. Uh, not really. I suppose we started late, but no one will ever know. Um, so head on over to at Scotch Boarding, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Check us out. Head over to rabblepress.com. We were talking about the, the Bing, the Bing pod. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So other podcasts, um, Reigns of Podcast Mirror, if you like Game Thrones, because this week's episode is a gem. It just, um, uh, just went up an hour ago as well, so. Amazing. So, uh, check out Reigns of Podcast Mirror, but best to head over to rabblepress.com to just see all of our offerings. YouTube at RabbitPress.com if you're like, man, these guys sound really good looking. I just want to see if they are. And the answer is absolutely. Uh, or head on over to Twitch at ZainaZedef, Z-A-E-N-I-S-D-E-S-E-F on Twitch. Check him out. He also does weird nerd things that I still don't understand called griefing with Lady Bunch Fundle Bridge. No, oh, Lady Hawk Fundle There you go. There, she got it. <laughs> I got it. Go. So if you want to see Chris doing nerd things, um, check out his Twitch page and also to watch us live. Uh, But otherwise, have a great week and thanks for listening, everybody. You've been listening to a Rebel Press podcast. Visit rebelpress.com for more podcasts.